Hey folks, this is Shane from ZV. Today we're going back into the Porsche engine bay. Again. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. If for those of you new to the channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. Um, over a few videos, we've started to explore how we're actually going to fit that motor into the, the Porsche engine bay. Um, as you'd have seen in the last one, while there's plenty of space in the engine bay itself, where we want to fit the motor, uh, which is where the gearbox used to be, there's actually a lot less space. It's a lot more confined and was very much built around the, I guess, the size and shapes of gearboxes that fit there, or that were supposed to fit there. So we're going to have to get a bit creative with how we make this work and to be honest the tools and things that I had to do it with before weren't quite enough so the dolly wasn't high enough so I was having to kind of extrapolate <laughs> figures and dimensions based on that. Um, so we're going to try and get things a little bit closer to into the space to see exactly where you know specific parts of the motor are going to foul on the bodywork and and figure out what our options are around uh, fishing that motor. So yeah, come on us as we continue the journey. All right, so we're continuing our investigations into how we're going to get this motor to fit. Um, as you saw in the last episode, we cleared out a couple of the heavier, bigger pipes. Uh, there's still a, a bunch of stuff I need to remove, but um, I kind of want to get an idea in my head of how this is all going to fit before I go and uh, start stripping out more. So, broken down the drivetrain into its two component parts, the, the gearbox and the, the motor, and I'm just going to basically try a few things, get an idea of how things what things definitely won't work um, so then we can we can narrow it down and start to, to work on figuring out what will work. So one of the challenges I am having is this this cross member here um, that goes between the suspension uprights. You know it it's there for a reason. Um, it's not just to, to make things look pretty. So things like this I don't want to have to remove um, because even if I do put something in place without a lot of measuring and testing and knowing the, you know, what, what exactly this metal is, how it functions, I'll probably get the, um, you know, the structure of it wrong. And that will mean that, uh, you know, it won't be doing the same thing that it, this piece does so um, I don't want to have to go and reinvent it. What we're going to look at now though is how how the gearbox fits um, with this in place. So let's get the gearbox. So I do wonder whether I should have chosen a car with slightly better access to where I was going to put the, uh, the <laughs> motor. Um, I don't think doing this by hand is going to work. I think I'm going to have to do what I said I was going to do and build a new dolly um, that will kind of have things at this height uh, to make it more workable. Okay, so this is the gearbox on its own, um, kind of mocked up in the space where it would need to fit. And the challenge, as you can see here, is the mount that has the parking brake on it basically is fouling on the, on the body where the, um, the rear seats are. So if we want this to fit in any way, we'd have to chop off the entirety of that mount. So the, um, the 
so that it would uh, it would fit. And basically, then we're dealing with kind of an, a slope here, which should fit in under that. Um, so that is something that could be done, but then we're going to have to get the motor up here and figure out what would need to happen on the other side, which is here, where the motor would be making contact with it. There's another option which I'm considering. Um, we need to see how this goes with the motor attached as well. But what about if we run things upside down? So we have the motor attached here in, in this space um, with the gearbox down here. So the motor would be not quite totally inverted, but maybe 30. 40, 40 degrees out from that. Uh, I guess that's one potential advantage of not having to worry about things like cylinders firing and complex oil paths and oil pickups. In theory, you could run this upside down. Now, again, I would need to do a little bit of work. It looks like this um, little lug here is pressing on things, but with that ground off which wouldn't do anything to affect the um, the casing itself that might work I think what I'll need to do before I go and manhandle the motor up into place here is attach the motor to the gearbox or the gearbox to the motor and then take the cross member off and just see how how they line up on their own so we've got the gearbox just attached to the motor and I think unfortunately we end up in the same situation again um, where the pieces of extra metal that are in place to allow the inverter to sit on top of the motor end up, would end up fouling on the um, on the cross members, the only option would be if we went down this route, we'd have to get an angle grinder at the motor itself and cut off um, bits of these mounts. Now, it's not a problem for the actual functioning of the motor. Certainly not on this side. That one can definitely come off without affecting anything. This one is a little bit closer to being part of the overall motor, so we'd have to be more careful with how we do that. Alright, after taking the time to put the engine mount back into place, I'm going to take it out again and just see if there's any extra space to be had down this end of things. An alternative option we could consider is to mount the motor longitudinally in the body um, and then as I mentioned outside the car have some sort of gearbox or diff in this space here. Um, so we've removed the mounts that or the standard Porsche mounts for the, the gearbox uh, which has allowed us to push the motor further back into the body though I am a little bit concerned about um, 
yeah, how much lower than everything else it is, even when it fits fits in this space. Um, but it, it does have potential. It's about 30 centimeters or maybe 35 centimeters between the front of the shaft and the front of the cross member. Um, so that has potential. Um, see what other solutions we can come up with. Right, so continuing with know, trying to think a little bit laterally and come up with different ideas. Um, we're actually getting a fair bit closer if we turn the motor upside down. Um, so it gives us an extra centimeter or two in the space to you know, place gives us a little bit more space to work with in terms of some sort of differential or gearbox or something in this space um, and also raises the spline itself slightly higher. I've got probably another three to four centimeters to play with um, before things max out but then there is also the possibility of potentially grinding back a couple of the mounting sections for the gearbox, the standard gearbox. Um, if those were cut off, then I would probably have about 10 centimeters to play with in terms of extra height. Um, that, you know, it could work. I'll need to start digging around and see what sort of options are available for turning the the rotation of this shaft into something that the um that can actually turn the wheels uh within the space we've got uh also that will be looking at what um what we can get to couple this with something else as well as how we Get the um, get the wheels turning. So, reviewing what we had been looking at previously with the drive shafts, and thinking about not using the leaf ones, but looking at potentially how we can use the Porsche ones with whatever ends up in this space. Um, all of this is pretty theoretical at the moment, so I'm going to have to go and. Yeah, start digging around and see if I can find some sort of gearbox or differential with a decent ratio. Um, obviously, I don't want to put something in here that's like a 2.9 to 1 final drive ratio because it, it just, you know, I'll, I'll have a crazy top speed but no acceleration. Um, so I'll, I'll need to do some, some maths around that as well and see see if something can be made to work. Alright, so I've got a good few things I'm going to need to wrestle around with. Um, obviously, putting the motor in here this way kind of messes around with any initial thoughts I had about how to, how to mount it, so I'll be back to the drawing board with that. I need to see what options there are for converting the drive from the motor into something that can go to the wheels. And um, yeah, we'll see where we get to from there. So the more I look at it, I do see some potential for this layout. Um, as I said previously, there's a fair bit that I need to check out to see if it would work. But it does seem to fit quite well into the space. And there is the added advantage that the um, mounting points on the car are actually much closer to the mounting points on the motor than they would be in any of the other 
layouts I've looked at. Um, the one downside is currently, and bearing in mind this is just very loosely put in place, the um, lower parts of the motor would be a little bit lower than the rest of the car, so I'd need to to look into how we how we minimise the downsides of that. It's already a low car; we don't want to make it a high. But I think, as it stands, this is definitely worth me investigating further. Uh, so I'll go off and start trying to figure this out, and I'll let you all know how I get on. So with so little space and so few mounting points, um, figuring out how to fit the motor is proving challenging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another point at which I can mount or at least suspend the motor from just to give me another fixing point to work with um, so we can keep on trying different uh, options. So we need to get some measurements. This may just be temporary, it may be an engine mount for the future, but um, at least gives me something else to work with. So I think we're getting a bit closer than we were last time. Um, I think we've got a couple of viable options for fitting the motor. Um, I think the only thing I can do now is to really bring all the components together and using a bunch of hoists and props and everything, try and just mock fit the the motor into a couple of these locations and just see how that works um, you know will there be ways that we can attach a mount to the motor to actually hold it in that position or is it just totally unfeasible um, as I said before this is, is, is a bit of a journey and I, I wanted to show you all of the the challenges that I'm coming across as we're doing it and we're definitely coming across some challenges um, I hope you'll join us as we continue to go through this. If you've liked what you've seen, please, you know, click the like button, leave a comment, um, and you know, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. Um, you know, I really appreciate the kind of the feedback and um, positive messages that many of you've been sending through. It's really helped me to to go forward when when the, when things get a little bit tough. Um, but till next time, thanks for. Uh, watching us and uh, we'll be back.